Hi, I'm Michael from 8Ounce. I work with a number of our different product teams and showroom and customer service. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the manual espresso makers we've got at 8Ounce Coffee. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the manual espresso makers that we have here at 8Ounce and uh, just kind of why you might want to look into these ones, what benefits it might bring to you, what would help with your decision making. Because we carry now quite a few different styles of manual espresso makers and so it's good to think about some of these things going forward. And really, I didn't do this on purpose, but it's kind of the way they've fallen on the table. We have kind of two major categories. Both are ultimately, all of these are portable to some degree, but some are more portable, being these small ones over here, and some of them are more things that are gonna stay on your coffee bar, be accessible to you day after day, uh, and uh, might not necessarily get packed up and taken on a camping trip or taken on your next vacation. And then some of them definitely suit that kind of set and options for sure. And so uh, we wanna look at some of them today. The ones that we've got on my left, your right, would be the flare products, just a few of the, two of the flare products we're currently carrying. And then on my right, your left, we have uh, the Lever Presso and the Wakako uh, Nano Presso. And so like I said, some of the ones that we're looking at uh, on the right here, they're more designed to be highly portable. And so they have some well, I mean, in the case of some of them, not any compromise really on how well they make a shot or how easy they are to use uh, and for the sake of portability. In the case of the Lever Presso, yeah, this thing definitely has uh, a high level of portability as you can knock it all the way down to a much smaller option in size, uh, but then still has the ability to be set up on a nice uh, platform so that it's easy to use uh, and to not feel too complicated for the, the beginner user. Uh, with the Wakako, the Nano Presso, you're looking at something that really does pack down into such a small capacity. And here at the office where we've had a couple of people try this, they were shocked at the degree of ease there was in using this, but also in the quality of the shot that it produced as well. Uh, and the nice thing with all of these is they just come uh, kind of all in on themselves. So with both of them, they come with their own cup for uh, putting it into the uh, fully equipped with their own filter baskets and their pressurization systems. Uh, both of them promise to be able to handle, I think with the Wakako it's about 18 bars of pressure, uh, I think it's 11 bars of pressure with the Lever Presso, and so more than capable in creating those pressures to get that really high extraction in your shot. As far as ease of use, uh, some of them are a little in their, you know, in their compact design, there'll be a different kind of workflow than your typical uh, you know, espresso maker, automated espresso maker. Uh, you're not looking at some of the portafilter baskets and some of the tools that you can typically use like you might get with some of the other uh, ones here. These are gonna be unique. And so they typically come all in one with their own uh, tamping devices, uh, their own baskets uh, and different styles. And so it is important to be aware that if you're coming from something that you know, you're very used to, there might be elements of using these ones that would be a little different, maybe a little more complicated, uh, or not complicated, but just feel like a different kind of workflow. So uh, it's important to be thinking about those things as you're considering purchasing these, that they aren't gonna have that identical workflow to an automated machine. Uh, they're gonna look and feel a little different, but they're still capable of producing really lovely shots. In my experience with these, I found that the, um, the Nanopresso was a little easier to use all the way around and the results were a little more consistent and so certainly if you're looking for something that is portable, uh, this is going to be a great option. I can totally see myself in the backcountry, maybe not the backcountry, there is a bit of weight to this. I could see myself at a campground, uh, you know, using this thing to get that shot uh, and probably surprising the next door neighbor campers at, you know, actually pulling out a full-on espresso maker in the middle of the woods. And maybe if it was like a short trip, you could actually see myself getting this into the backcountry uh, as an option over, um, you know, maybe just having instant coffee or some very sludgy uh, French press. So these are great options to consider. They're also really entry level in their cost points, uh, as certainly considering against a fully automated machine as well. 
Uh, but the fact that they are so compactable and portable is really where they win because uh, they do produce a shot that is uh, of a quality shot. On my left, your right, are our two flare products, which are great uh, options for anyone looking for a manual uh, levered espresso maker. Myself, I love kind of having a coffee ritual that is really tactile and involved. Uh, it helps ground me in the morning, so I'm not the type of person who wants to rush through my process. I want to kind of wake up through the, the act of making myself a good cup of coffee or making my wife a good cup of coffee. And so these manual espresso makers are really a great way to do it. This is actually my <laughs> uh, Flare Pro 2, uh, and I've had it for a few months now. I bought it when we first got it here and really have enjoyed it. I think I've gotten to the point now where I'm using it every day. I thought maybe I would use it on the weekends or to impress friends, and it's become my go-to coffee maker in the morning. Uh, and uh, I just love making it every day. I find it has about the same length of workflow as a pour over, so somewhere around kind of five minutes all in, which is really great. Uh, in the sense I didn't change the length of my coffee making workflow versus what I was normally doing. Uh, there are a few steps to do to dial it in um, and it certainly took me a little while, actually it's true with all these, of trying to find the right grind size can be a bit of an experiment uh, versus what you might be used to, but it, it's definitely doable. Um, I've bought a couple of accessories for this just to help out with kind of making it a more, uh, like a bit of a smoother, more consistent workflow. So I bought a collared tamper that's specifically designed to fit the smaller porter filter basket. Um, working on still trying to find a scale that'll fit well in, this, in, in the drip tray. The Lunar fits, both the Lunar and the Time War Nano are, they fit, but they fit in a way where they sit a little forward. And so whatever you're making the shot into tends to sit fairly far back on the scale. I found the Lunar, it didn't affect any of the readings, but with the Time War Black Mirror Nano, which will hopefully be on our site soon, uh, it did. I did find that if it, the further back it was, that there was a bit of inaccuracies that I was getting out of that. So still trying to hunt down a perfect scale for this guy. Um, and that's kind of about the only real accessory that I haven't been able to nail down for it yet. Uh, so just kind of going off of feel and off of uh, some volumetric, kind of going into a measuring cup uh, right now to get the right volumes. But really enjoy it all and find that I'm getting shots that, you know, friends of mine are coming by who I want to impress and they're impressed by the shots that I'm getting out of it. And uh, I don't find it too difficult to lever on. I like to actually get the pressure uh, going, but it does take a firm grip and it takes a little getting used to the first couple times you do it. In contrast, to that uh, would be the Flare 58, and which I got an opportunity to use out of our showroom recently. And I will say that uh, I think the goals that were designed in this thing to, to make it closer to like the workflow of a typical uh, automated machine are definitely met here. This was just so uh, intuitive to use if you've ever used an automated machine. And the tools that we have, say, an accessible in our showroom for a 58 mil portafilter basket automated machine all work in this, whether it's uh, a, a Duomo distributor or a forced tamper, collared tamper. All those things work with this. The drip tray is designed to handle a Lunar and handles it quite comfortably. It's a little tight for the Black Mirror Nano when we tried it recently, but just overall, the fit and feel of most things is really nice. And I will say that the extended arm on this does make the ease to create the nine bars of pressure really, really easy. I think it took me uh, like two shots to have this dialed in versus like about 10 shots to dial in my Pro 2, just because it felt so similar to uh, the Brevels, you know, a dual boiler that we have in the office or any other automated machine I've tried using. Um, the filling was really nice, the valve on the top here so that you can just fill hot water right directly into the chamber. You're not finicking with any hot things or touching any hot metal. It's just an easy pour directly in. We'll say being left-handed, it does require a bit of a right-hand pour, but other than that, it was very, very simple to use with the gooseneck kettle. And the uh, heated collar on the Flare 58 really did a wonderful job of making sure that we, I wasn't spending any extra time preheating the chamber. It was ready to go. It responded perfectly. I had wonderful crema on the shot and a really, really nice tasting shot as well. Uh, everything that I would expect. So I would say the, the workflow time on this one was probably down two minutes 
over the workflow for, uh, for the Pro 2. And so if you are looking for something that would give you that manual process still, a little more tactile, a little more engaged, if you're the type of person who loves using a hand grinder over an electric grinder, like me in the morning, just for that whole ritual, this is great because it's not gonna add, I don't think, a, a minute longer than you would with an automated machine. Um, and all the steps that you would be doing to prep, say, your grind and get the kettle heated up, that as soon as those two sort of things are done, you're ready to go, you're ready to pull your shot and uh, it creates a really wonderful shot. It's also great that all of the accessories for any 58 mil machine is gonna work for this. So uh, it's really wonderful to have that broad, um, you know, flexibility to make this machine what you want it to be. Uh, and I think it's just, they're both beautiful. I have a all matte black coffee bar at home and these things will just look great on them. So I've really enjoyed using them. I think if the type of person that I think would, these would be perfect for is that person who really enjoys having that coffee ritual in the morning, who really wants to have those additional pieces, uh, who maybe want, who's okay with a little more hands-on uh, action and all of it, but still really wants a high quality shot every morning. I think these machines are, are for you. And it's just really a question of, are you willing to sacrifice a little more time for a little less uh, financial input? Or if you want kind of all the bells and whistles right at the gate, then I think the Flare 58 is for you. Yeah, so thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in those comments down below. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to throw those down in the comments below and happy brewing.